So more than likely, if you've come across this channel, you are thinking about traveling to Mexico, investing in a different place, traveling to the Yucatan Peninsula or the wonderful city of Medina, Mexico, where I own a home, which is probably why the algorithm shifted you in my direction. But if you've looked at traveling to Medina, Mexico, and you've realized that over the years, prices seem to be increasing like crazy, you're not alone. And we're gonna talk about some of the reasons why that may be the case, what my experience is, and what I'm hearing from that region as well. So rather than dragging on and on and on about things, let's just get into it and roll the intro. So welcome back to those of you who are a part of this channel and of course welcome to those of you who this is the first time for those of you who don't know my name is alexander howell and my wife and i my family purchased a home in Medellin, mexico several years ago we went through the renovation process we have all kinds of stories about it and if you want to see some of those stories check out this channel and if you like this video and the others feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button and also hit that little bell that's going to let you know anytime that one of these videos goes live or i happen to be live and you can come into that stream and ask me any questions that you want. I also have a bunch of information down below where you can contact me, like texting me at 816-727-7740, checking out my website. We have a Facebook group. It's awesome kind of stuff, but all that information is in the description down below, so check it out. But for right now, the main thing is, is Medina getting more expensive? The fact of the matter is, yes. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're watching a video, a guy that looks like me, owns a place in Mexico. I'm in the United States a lot. I'm planning on retiring down there. Am I part of the problem? And the answer is probably in some way, shape and or form, yes. I'm a gringo, I'm an expat. One of these days, I'll probably be some type of immigrant, whether it's permanent resident or whatever it might be. We are planning to be down there even more than we are right now. And even right now, we're down there quite a bit. But we own a home, we Airbnb it out, people look at me and they probably think that I'm part of the problem. And in truth, that may be part of the case, but not really. So let's talk about exactly what it is that is occurring in this wonderful city. Because you see, a lot of people think that YouTubers and expats and all these different situations are the reason that prices are increasing. And in some cases, that is the case. There are people that want to come from all over the world to be a part of this wonderful community, the second safest city, not just in Mexico, in North America. So of course they're going to be drawn to it. It's a beautiful colonial city. It's 40 minutes from the beach. It's a wonderful place to be. But when you really look at it, not from a micro, but from a macro perspective, you're looking at a place that is increasing in price because the rest of the world is doing the same thing. The only difference is people are starting to discover this area. So whereas in the past you might have Cabo or Cancun or Tulum or San Miguel de Allende, all these different places where expats tend to go, Medina Mexico is becoming a really good destination because of its location, because of its climate, even though it gets hot as can be in the summertime. But it also is a city of around a million people that has a Costco, it has a Walmart, it has all of the features that somebody who is an expat can come in, enjoy the city for what it is, enjoy the place for its wonderful, rich heritage and the fact that it's Yucatecan and Mayan and all of these different things. You can come into this wonderful city, not feel like it's just tourism central, but also still have some of the conveniences that you're used to back at home. But even though that might be the case, the truth is there are more people moving that are Mexicans from other parts of Mexico to Merida than the expat population combined. In fact, the expat population in the Yucatan overall, and I mean Yuc the Yucatan meaning the state of Yucatan, which is where Merida is and Progreso and all those other cities, the total population of expats is about, it's less than 20,000 in a city of around a million people. But let's talk about the things that are absolutely happening. So the last time we went down there, this was in July to August of this past year in 2023, it's now 2024. When we went down there, the truth is that yes, food prices from the time that we first started going down there, they have absolutely increased. Drink prices, food prices, pretty much every price from A to Z has increased. The difference is it's like that in the rest of the world too. Now, why is this? Because gas prices have gone up, fuel prices have gone up. COVID really took a hit to kind of everything there and here and everywhere else in the world. If you have somebody that thinks that the prices are the same now as they were three years ago, they're living in a dream world, Neo. You've been living in a dream world, Neo. And if you have fuel prices going up, no matter where you are in the world, that means that prices on everything that has to be delivered via a vehicle that uses fuel is going up. And that's what we're seeing. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. This is where I was born and raised and where I still live now. 
my basement's being finished, so you see the, uh, that one, you see the frozen poster behind me. This isn't normally my office. My office is an unfinished basement that's being finished now. But I'm up here because that's where my desk has to be while construction goes on. But everywhere in the world, whether it's right here in Kansas City, whether it's Canada, Mexico, all over the earth, prices have been affected. And one of the places that you see that is Mexico. And so when you go down there and you expect to see lower prices than other places, you're going to be surprised because prices are still considerably lower. They're just not what they were even a few years ago. My market, I live in a, this is a newer subdivision where we are. The houses that are being built now are significantly more expensive than when we initially purchased this house. It's the same with our house in Mexico. The ones that are currently being sold, even if they've been lived in for a while, not just recently renovated, have gone crazy high in prices. And why is that? Same reason as anything else. People want to be there. Prices have increased even when we were building our home, even when we, when we were renovating our place. The price of cabinets, wood, tile, all of those things was going up during construction. We got very lucky when we built when we did because even though we put a lot of money into that house, it was more expensive by the time it was done. Very fortunate in timing. So hinting to that, real estate prices aren't just increasing everywhere in the world, but when we talk about Medida and you talk about the increase in tourism, people moving there, the fact that it's becoming a more well-known spot, the fact that the Pier and Progreso, which again is the area that's about 40 minutes north of that, that's in the Gulf of Mexico, it has the largest pier in the world. What that pier is bringing are tourists. It has two, three different cruise lines every single week that go in there and those thousands of people come off and they either hang out in Progreso or they have tours that go into Merida. And we see them all the time. You see tourists going all around the main centers like Plaza Grande, Paseo de Mateo and Merida. It's a normal thing that you'll see. But that rise in tourism, the rise in the fact that it's a more well-known place, the rise because people like me continue to talk about it on the internet and on YouTube. That is the reason why it continues to grow in popularity. So not only are you seeing growth from other people in Mexico coming in there, but the rise in popularity of a place that has all of those features that we just talked about, it's starting to boom. I shouldn't say starting, it's in the middle of booming like crazy. And it really is a place that's popular with expats. Now, like I said, there's a smaller community, but you do see a lot of people going there because of the reduced prices. And even though it might not be, say, a significant a difference between Kansas City and Medida, it's definitely a significant difference if you live in a place like the West Coast or East Coast. I talk to people all the time from San Diego, LA, Las Vegas, New York, Boston, all of these big cities where a price in Kansas City seems ludicrously cheap. So the difference between me going down there and being down there isn't as crazy. But if you're talking about being able to buy a broom closet for a million dollars or being able to buy a home for 450, you can kind of see why it's a pretty nice place to be. Now, a lot of the things that I hear in the comment section on this channel and others are, well, you're kind of contributing to it. So for those of you who don't know, my wife and I went down kind of on a sabbatical, took the kids down, and we ended up loving the place so much. And we'd been wanting to buy a house in Mexico. So we got down there and within two weeks, we were looking at houses. By the time we left, we had a contract on one. We bought it. We signed the contract, had it purchased, all of that within a couple of months. COVID hit, but then we were renovating for about a year and a half. We have a wonderful architect named Henry Ponce who did an amazing job doing it. We went over and above what anybody really ever needs to do, but we also knew that we had a bunch of family and friends that would be coming down, so we built our house around that. Now, because of the sheer amount of investment that we put into it, the fact that we had to refi this house and a lake home that we have in order to basically pay for that house, lending is a little suspect, we had to basically pay off the entire thing. So the house, the renovation, the furniture, everything was cash. I have a bunch of videos on that. Check out those videos again, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. But getting back to it, we had to see some type of return on investment. Now, when we retire, it's not going to be as big of a deal. We'll just own the house, live in it, love it, do those kind of things. But for right now, having it at least pay for itself is a positive thing. And in the case of ours, we Airbnb it the whole year, unless we're down there. But from about early November until mid to late March, it's booked completely through because it's cold up here and it's warm down there. It's actually negative six degrees Fahrenheit right here while I'm recording. And it's about 89 degrees down there. So a nice spot to leave here and go down there for the winter. But it's very good to Airbnb and we get 
a little over $400 a night. And it depends on kind of what you do. If you rent it for a month, you get a little bit of reduced rate, but we do Airbnb the property. That link's down below if you want to see it. But I do hear a lot of people in the comment section basically saying that we're contributing to this increase in prices. And I don't think that's wrong, but you also have to look at the market overall. When you look at hotels, there are a few hotels in Medida, but for the most part, there's the Hyatt, a couple of more, and there are not many other big name hotels. And for a room at the Hyatt, it's around $250 a night, whereas you can get our entire home for not quite double that per night and have a bunch of friends come down and you're basically splitting it there. There are also a bunch of boutique hotels that are about the same rental amount, but you can kind of see where the economics are, where the Airbnb market can look as good as the hotel market. It just depends on the person who rents it. And that is true in every single economy where these sharing economies come in. If you have Airbnb or VRBO, whatever it might be, you're going to see those prices kind of shift a little bit. But in Medida, when you can get a hotel cheap, when you get a house cheap for rent and it is nice, that's just kind of the way that the market's gonna go. Again, this is the part that some people don't like because it's free markets and free markets yield the best and blah, 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 blah. But it really is a holistic view of everything. If you have a rising market, people are interested, they're gonna wanna move down there. That means the prices are gonna be good. And that's people from inside the country and from outside the country like us. People moving down, renovating the property, the properties get nicer, they end up selling, they end up renting, they end up doing that. Prices are going to increase. You couple that with the idea that the overall market in the entire world has increased as far as cost of goods sold and everything else, you can see why a market like this, which is very much sought after, the prices have gone up. And the biggest thing that I really have to wrap my head around is it's not somebody who can afford it that goes down, buys a house, renovates it, that kind of thing. There's an argument that kind of goes back and forth online, which is basically you're buying places that locals can no longer afford. And so you're a bad person because you're taking away those opportunities. And I, I get that argument and we see that all the time. I mean, I've on this channel alone, I've been called a colonizer, gentrifier, all kinds of stuff. And I, I've seen it, I've heard it and I see it in Kansas city as much as I see it in Medida and everywhere else in the world. It's something that you kind of have to deal with in some way, shape and or form. But what I will say is this, in Medida is a very unique situation because the house like ours that we bought wasn't a home that somebody had been living in for 40 years really enjoyed it. Ours was a home that hadn't been touched in at least 10 years. I've heard as much as 20 plus. And you could tell that when you went through the property, the roof was falling apart, everything was falling apart. And there are a lot of properties in many that are like this. I mean, it's a plurality of a percentage of properties that are just abandoned in this city. And that's not to say that there shouldn't be an opportunity for people to come in, renovate them or do whatever they need to do and actually make it more affordable. I'm just saying that there are so many places that just buying one that was basically a ruin doesn't seem to be having much of an effect on the overall, on the entirety of homes there. So when I hear people say things like that, I have to take it with a grain of salt because I understand the direction that they're coming from, but I also have to say, this was a place that was falling down before we got there and us renovating it helped all of the neighbors there that had to look at it for that many years and now they have from the outside at least just a nice clean place to be so i get the argument i understand it i've seen it and i've dealt with it for a long time but in this particular situation we made it better and i'm happy about that so as far as real estate is concerned i actually think that there is a positive in the people that are coming in renovating the places making them like new or like they were several years ago and especially in Medida, when you see from the outside the facade doesn't necessarily show what is behind it you'll walk by a place that looks very plain like ours but once the doors open you see how amazing it is behind it so it's not like it's you know building a mansion in the middle of a bunch of small houses you're basically building whatever you want behind and keeping the look very nice from the outside. I think that's probably the best way to put it. But real estate is definitely the big thing that you hear about making Merida a little bit unaffordable in some way, shape or form. It's not you can buy a house for $150,000 anymore that has all the features that it does. You can still do that for sure, but you might be looking at a different style. You might have to give up a couple of things. You're not gonna get what you used to be able to get for the amount of money that you could. But again, this is like everywhere else in the world. What we bought this house for would not work in any way, shape or form now, like it did four years ago when we initially purchased it. And that's Kansas City, not Medida. 
And the other thing is this, I hear a lot about how it's unaffordable and I completely disagree. When you go to Merida, there are definitely things that are more expensive like they are all over the world. But I will also tell you that you also need to just look in different places. When we're down there, we're down there for a month. We don't eat out all the time. But one of the nicer places in Merida that we've gone to, actually a couple of them, when you sign the bill, you're like, man, this is expensive, but it's expensive for where you are. If we went to the same place, got the same food, got the same wine, got the same everything, here in Kansas City, which is typically a cheaper market, it is still only about 70% the cost of what things are here. So if it's 100 here, it's about 70%, 80% there. So you're still talking about an affordable market, you just kind of have to get your mind around what you're looking at. And just be smart. We cook all the time when we're at the house. And to buy groceries as opposed to just going out to eat makes things ludicrously cheap, especially when you're in an area like we are at, which is uh, uh, Meharada or Chembe. We have Chenbeck Market right down the street. We go there, we pick up everything, and it costs very, very little. So yes, we could go out to eat and get charged, you know, a bunch of money for vodka tonics and salmon and oysters and that kind of thing. Or we go down to the market, we go down to the chicken place, the tortilleria, those kind of things, and still have a very affordable situation. So really what this video is about is if you're looking for a place that is affordable, Merida is, while increasing in price, it is still a very affordable place to be. Is it what it used to be? Absolutely not. And trust me, go on any expat Facebook group and they will complain all day long about how it's not the same as it was 20 years ago. And my thought process as always is nothing's the same as it was 20 years ago we kind of live in a different age and that just is what it is so i absolutely would tell you go visit Medi to mexico if you're ever thinking about being an expat down there i think it is an amazing place to be because like i said it's a beautiful wonderful community it has an amazing culture and history and the people are fantastic and it also has some really cool stuff that's just really convenient to have like costco sam's club walmart and that kind of thing you can even go to texas roadhouse if you want but it has those things while also having the rest. And again, check out this channel. I have tons of videos talking about different food places, different experiences, expectations. I've got a bunch of videos about our house and how we built it and the renovation process. So check out this, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Be notified anytime that one of these videos comes up and check out all of the information down below. I'm on Instagram. I have a Facebook group that's Travel to Medida. It's amazing. And you can text me directly, 816-727-7740. That goes right to my phone. It goes right to my phone. I'll text you right back. If you have any questions that you might have, you can also email me, alexander at alexanderhowell.com. All of that information down below, check out the description. And if you do have a comment, a question, anything like that, also just feel free to comment down below. Just like liking, engage with it, and uh, I see the response. I see the initial comment. I'll respond back to that. If you say anything else, just text me. It makes it a lot easier. But thank you guys so much for being here and for watching this video again. My name is Alexander Howell. Thank you again for being a part of this channel. And uh, as always, peace.